Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are going to create a custom ray tracer to get perspective images um, like these rendered. Uh, we're going to do this in compositing mode and you can also use ray tracing for example to identify which polygons are inside using SOPs. Now in this lesson this is how far we are going to go so we we'll just read in um, the objects and get their UV information and their texture information into perspective and this is happening with the VEX snippet. So if you just want to see how it's built up you can see here well, that would be the map information but we already also get the information about the number of primitive or the primitive numbers we got. We also have the specific intrinsic UVs on each primitive and we can read in the UV map maps as well which is then being used for the maps again. Alright, um, let's create a new document and just create a bit of geometry so inside we will just use the test geometry called toy and um, this is going to look like this. It already has some UVs. You can press spacebar 1 for the perspective and spacebar 5 to get the UV map. And we want to set this right on the floor by going minus dollar y min we find the lowest point and move it up accordingly and we want to sit this right on a grid and this grid should also contain UV information so we put a UV texture on it which is projecting orthographically. Now what we're missing are some normals on this geometry stream so let's just assign them to points and merge both streams so we have some geometry to test our renderer on. For easy reference we will append a null object called out and this should be it for now so we have a geometry sitting right on a grid. I will look from this side so we are viewing the positive, tech, uh, the positive position space and create a new camera. You can uh, activate the lock and just reposition it a bit. And this would be all we need. I just call this geometry node scene so that way we can refer to it more easily in the image context. The manager you may already have can be renamed to ray tracer and inside we just create a generator which we could call renderer if you like. Now this Vopcop2 generator contains, contains the usual suspects but we can delete them and create a snippet instead. The only input we will need are x and y coordinates anyways. Now in order to see the composite view I will just drag it down here so we can still see the 3D space and the UV space but we also would like to work on the canvas. So right in image context on our renderer node we will just define a size. I will do something rather small to make it fit on my screen 640 by 320 and inside the snippet we want to assign to R, G and B a color vector and now it's arguing that there are, is no color vector so let's define one and refer to the position of our canvas. Now again it's missing the position of our canvas which is just set up of x, y and 0. So here you see the gradients running from left to right 
and you can press I to see these values in detail. So from top to bottom we get from 0 to 1 and from left to right uh, the same in red colors. So this would be red, this would be green. Now uh, the first thing we have to take into consideration is the aspect ratio. Otherwise our image would be distorted or stretched later on. And the aspect is simply the Y resolution divided by the X resolution. And in order to get the division working, we have to cast the X resolution to float. Now let's bring this in here. First of all, X and Y have to be subtracted by 0.5 to make this centered. like this and y has to be multiplied by the aspect ratio. That way you see we lost a little uh, values up here so this is no longer going up to 0.5 but just to 0.25 which is again um, yeah, referring to the aspect ratio. Now the next steps would be to um, get the camera information in. So let's just say we uh, need a parameter by the name cam. We can call it camera for the user and a geometry string will be what we need. So we can go up one level and just drag in the camera and put OP column in front. So we would like to know the transformation matrix of the camera by going up, transform, cam. So this would be all the information about where the camera is located and how it's oriented. And one thing we want to um, get specifically is the position only. So we would crack transform the, um, the transformation matrix and just get the position value out. Now the position of the cam can be visualized a bit. So if you just press I again, you will see minus 3.9, 2.1 and 3.2 are is our XYZ coordinates of the camera. There you go. And um, if you want to see the crack transform function in detail, you would just um, find out all about its arguments, uh, the transformation orders, and um, the type of information you want to get out and um, the pivot information, everything has been set to zero here. Great. Um, next thing we need is we want to um, transform this, um, this canvas into a 3D space. So basically um, we want to pin the canvas in front of the camera with the correct orientation so it matches the camera. And we can do this by simply um, multiplying the canvas with the transformation matrix. So I would from now on call our canvas sensor and say you're the position canvas multiplied by the X form of the camera. So that way it's now virtually sitting in 3D space and in order to get a direction of like, like the frustrum of the camera so it's spreading out and not all rays are going in parallel but actually um, building up a frustum, we need to also um, first of all define a position of our focal point within the camera and also uh, multiplying this by x form. So let's just do this. We say vector position focal 
and this works by saying we have a point right in the center but it's going to be a bit back and then we multiply it by the camera. Now of course the focal needs to be defined first so you would set up another parameter by the same name and I will set this to 1 by standard but give it a bit more of possible zoom strength and feed it in there. So now also the focal point should be round about here while the sensor is sitting right in front. Now if we subtract both positions we get a direction spreading outwards from the camera. So this would be the directions of the sensor. That's basically the normalized subtraction of both positions. The position of the sensor minus the position of the focal. And resulting from that we can also get the rays. So the rays are basically just the directions multiplied by a certain length which I can just call range so they go on longer than unit range if I want to so let's just set up a parameter by the name range and call this camera range for the user I will make my camera look out up to 1000 units and feed this in so now the rays should easily reach our target but also go further to capture the background as well. Okay now this would be anything we need to set up our camera and the next step would be to just get the textures in there. So um, the most important function to get ray tracing done is called intersect. This is basically what the ray sop is doing. So it wants to read in the geometry from the position of our sensor, shooting out rays, and it is going to return the position it has hit, as well as the ST, the texture coordinates on this polygon. So now it will argue that it's missing the geometry, of course. So we will set up a parameter containing our scene information. Let's call this geo and geo and set it to a geometry string. Up there, we just drag in the out node and put OP column in front. Now it's still missing the position of the sensor and the ray sensor. No, this is uh, already defined there. But we should set up a vector position hit in advance and also the ST information. What it also returns is um, basically an integer value containing the primitive it has hit. And now this will be a breakthrough if you look at the results. So primitive hit is going to be displayed already. So you can, if you just get inside the camera, see that from the very same perspective, but with a bit of a different focal length, we can see all the primitives appearing here. You can also visualize the position where it has hit. So you can, this is the world coordinates, basically this would be 0, 0 and then spreading out X and Z and Y. And if in case you wondered what ST is, this is the intrinsic UV coordinates across each primitive. Now one thing we would also like to see is um, to be seen here. We would like to get the UV information on our 
renderer. So let's just do this by using another function, which is called, or let's first of all define what we want. It's the UVW we fit and we can read in um, the information about the UV map by using prim UV. So we were referring to our geometry again. We are asking for UV and we do this on the primitive we have found and also on the ST coordinates. So this should be the UVW hit and you can tell here you can see the UV seams and all the yeah, basically UVs laid out here are transferred to our ray tracer. Now we want to do something a little special and we want to bring in our texture map. So for this we have to go back to our um, geometry context and use a primitive wrangle. And yeah, we could call this material because we may put in more later on here. And we defined a string, which is called text diff for diffuse. And this is referring to a string channel called diffuse texture. Let's click on this little icon and change this into a image file image and you can just access your hard disk and just choose a random texture and I will just maybe take this image and we would like to do something very similar so hold down alt and drag it over to the other stream and just choose a diff different image for that matter it could be something recognizable and now we have primitive attributes on each stream you can look it up here under primitives where it says gives you the full path on your hard disk great let's go back to our composite view inside our renderer and now the next step would be to read in that primitive information so we are looking for a string that is called or that are we going to call texture diffuse and we can read in primitive informations using the prim function on the geometry stream asking for text diff and on the primitive that has been hit next we would like to um, yeah, apply this or first of all get the actual pixel information in so we can sample these pixels from the map using color map and now we are referring to the before mentioned texture and UVW hit will be the coordinates we are sampling from Okay, now is the magic moment where we would like to see the map on our surfaces and there you go. It basically transferred all the information we need. So let's just keep the camera and see it's updating. Great. Now maybe the last step for this lesson would be how can we differentiate between the foreground and the background and this would simply work by defining a sky so i call this mask underscore sky and it's simply prim hit equals minus one so we can visualize this quickly by going mask underscore sky and then we can say mass sky question mark and we would like to see map diff and otherwise we would want to see the color of the sky which is not defined yet so we would just set up a parameter with the sky color 
choose a color without alpha. And once you got that, you can even give this uh, a predefined color and plug this into our snippet. Now you see I got uh, it exactly the other way around, so maybe we would just say color sky against map underscore diff 